Cleopatra, the renowned Egyptian queen, has left an indelible mark on both history and drama, first gaining fame as the lover of Julius Caesar and subsequently as the wife of Mark Antony. Ascending to the throne upon the death of her father, Ptolemy XII, in 51 BC, she wielded successive rule alongside her two brothers, and later, with her son. Following the triumph of Octavian's Roman armies over their united forces, Antony and Cleopatra met their demise through suicide, leading to Egypt's submission under Roman dominance. Cleopatra played a pivotal role in shaping Roman politics during a crucial era, emerging as a unique embodiment of the romantic femme fatale, a distinction unparalleled by any other woman in classical antiquity. Born to King Ptolemy XII Alites, Cleopatra was fated to be the final queen of the Macedonian dynasty that governed Egypt from the aftermath of Alexander the Great's demise in 323 BCE until its absorption by Rome in 30 BC. The lineage was inaugurated by Ptolemy, a distinguished general under Alexander, who ascended to the throne as the revered King Ptolemy I Soter of Egypt. Cleopatra of Macedonian descent possessed minimal, if any, Egyptian ancestry. Despite this, classical author Plutarch noted that she, uniquely among her family, took the initiative to learn Egyptian. For political reasons, she adopted the title of the new Isis, distinguishing herself from the earlier Ptolemaic queen Cleopatra III, who also asserted herself as the living embodiment of the goddess Isis. Coin portraits of Cleopatra capture a visage imbued with vitality rather than mere beauty, featuring a tender mouth, resolute chin, expressive eyes, expansive forehead, and a prominent nose. Upon the demise of Ptolemy XII in 51 BC, the mantle of the throne gracefully transitioned to his youthful offspring, Ptolemy XIII, and his daughter, the illustrious Cleopatra VII. While not definitively established, there is a likelihood that the two married soon after their father's death. At the age of 18, Cleopatra, with a seniority of approximately eight years over her brother, assumed a position of paramount authority in governance. Indications reveal that the initial decree wherein Ptolemy's name precedes Cleopatra's dates back to October of 50 BC. Shortly thereafter, Cleopatra found herself compelled to depart Egypt for Syria. There, she rallied an army, and in 48 BC, she boldly returned to confront her brother at Pelusium, situated on Egypt's eastern frontier. The tragic demise of the Roman general Pompey, who had sought sanctuary from Ptolemy XIII at Pelusium, coupled with the arrival of Julius Caesar, ushered in a fleeting period of tranquility. Cleopatra discerned the imperative need for Roman support, particularly that of Caesar, as a crucial means to reclaiming her throne. Both were resolute in leveraging the other's resources. Caesar, aiming to secure funds for the repayment of debts accrued by Cleopatra's father, elites, in his arduous efforts to maintain his throne. Cleopatra harbored an unwavering determination to retain her throne and, where feasible, revived the splendors of the initial Ptolemaic reigns. Her aspiration extended to reclaiming substantial portions of their former dominions encompassing southern Syria and Palestine. Caesar and Cleopatra, entwined in a passionate romance, shared an intimate winter together while besieged within the enchanting confines of Alexandria. With the arrival of Roman reinforcements in the subsequent spring, Ptolemy XIII fled and met his tragic fate, succumbing to the waters of the Nile. Cleopatra now wed to her brother Ptolemy XIV, saw the restoration of her rightful place on the throne. In the balmy days of June 47 BC, she welcomed the arrival of Ptolemy Caesar, affectionately known to the people of Alexandria as Caesarian, or Little Caesar, the paternity of Caesarian, as suggested by his name, remains veiled in the mists of history. It demanded two years for Caesar to quell the lingering embers of Pompeian opposition. Upon his triumphant return to Rome in 46 BC, he marked the occasion with a grand four-day triumph, a ceremonial spectacle reserved for generals in recognition of their victory over foreign adversaries. During this extravagant event, Arsinoe, the younger and adversarial sister of Cleopatra, was conspicuously paraded. Cleopatra, in a regal display, undertook at least one official visit to Rome, accompanied by her husband, brother, and son, lodged in the esteemed private villa of Caesar. 
situated beyond the flowing waters of the Tiber River, she possibly graced the dedication ceremony of a golden statue portraying her in the temple of Venus Genetrix, a revered ancestress of the Julian family, to which Caesar belonged. Notably, Cleopatra remained in the heart of Rome during the tumultuous events surrounding Caesar's tragic assassination in 44 BC. Following her return to Alexandria in 44 BC, Cleopatra's co-ruler, Ptolemy XIV, passed away. Cleopatra now wielded authority alongside her infant son, Ptolemy XV Caesar. At the Battle of Philippi in 42 BC, as Caesar's assassins faced defeat, Mark Antony emerged as the presumptive heir to Caesar's authority, or so it appeared, as Caesar's great-nephew and designated successor. Octavian, was still a frail young boy. Antony, now in command of Rome's eastern territories, beckoned Cleopatra to elucidate her role in the aftermath of Caesar's assassination. Embarking for Tarsus in Asia Minor with a lavish array of gifts, she deliberately postponed her departure, adding a touch of suspense to elevate Antony's anticipation. Gracefully, she glided into the city by navigating the Sidnus River aboard a barge, adorned in the regal attire befitting the embodiment of the new Isis. Enthralled by his identification with the god Dionysus, Antony, momentarily oblivious to his wife Fulvia's efforts in Italy against the rising threat of young Octavian, abandoned such concerns upon his return to Alexandria. Here, he embraced Cleopatra not merely as a protected sovereign, but as an autonomous and regal monarch. In the vibrant city of Alexandria, Cleopatra and Antony established a community of inimitable livers, a group whose existence has been viewed by some historians as a pursuit of debauchery and folly, while others interpret it as a devotion to the mystical cult of the god Dionysus. In the year 40 BC, Cleopatra welcomed the birth of twins, bestowing upon them the names Alexander Helios and Cleopatra Selene. Meanwhile, Antony had departed Alexandria, compelled to journey back to Italy, where he found himself compelled to reach a temporary accord with Octavian. As a component of this arrangement, he entered into matrimony with Octavian's sister, Octavia, following the demise of Fulvia. However, three years later, Antony became convinced that reconciliation with Octavian was an insurmountable challenge. Deeming his marriage to Octavia now inconsequential, he journeyed back to the east, reuniting with Cleopatra. In Antony's quest for financial backing for his deferred Parthian campaign, he turned to Cleopatra. In exchange, Cleopatra sought the restitution of a substantial portion of Egypt's eastern empire, encompassing extensive territories in Syria and Lebanon, and even the opulent balsam groves of Jericho. The Parthian campaign proved to be a costly failure, mirroring the transient success in the conquest of Armenia. Nonetheless, in 34 BC, Antony marked a triumphant homecoming to Alexandria, which was succeeded by a grand celebration known as the Donations of Alexandria. Crowds thronged to the gymnasium, eager to witness Cleopatra and Antony, regally seated on golden thrones, positioned atop a silver platform, with their children seated on slightly lower thrones beside them. Antony declared Caesarian to be Caesar's rightful son, thereby demoting Octavian previously adopted by Caesar as his son and heir to a status of legal illegitimacy. Cleopatra received acclamation as the Queen of Kings, while Caesarian was honored as the King of Kings. Alexander Helios was granted dominion over Armenia and the region beyond the Euphrates, while his younger brother, Ptolemy, was bestowed with the lands situated to the west of it. The sister of the boys, Cleopatra Selene, was designated as the ruler of Cyrene. Observing from Rome, it became evident to Octavian that Antony harbored ambitions for his extended family to govern the civilized world. A propaganda conflict erupted. Octavian took possession of Antony's will from the Temple of the Vestal Virgins, where it had been placed, and disclosed to the Roman populace that Antony had not only granted Roman territories to a foreign woman, but also planned to be interred beside her in Egypt. The rumor swiftly circulated that Antony had further intentions of relocating the capital from Rome to Alexandria. Antony and Cleopatra passed the winter of 32-31 BC in Greece. Subsequently, 
the Roman Senate stripped Antony of his anticipated consulship for the upcoming year and officially declared war against Cleopatra. The naval battle of Actium, occurring on September 2, 31 BC, where Octavian confronted the unified forces of Antony and Cleopatra, proved to be a calamity for the Egyptians. Subsequently, Antony and Cleopatra sought refuge in Egypt. Cleopatra withdrew to her mausoleum, while Antony embarked on his final battle. Upon hearing the erroneous report of Cleopatra's demise, Antony fell on his sword. In a final display of loyalty, he had himself carried to Cleopatra's retreat, where he passed away after urging her to reconcile with Octavian. Cleopatra interred Antony before taking her own life. The exact method of her demise remains uncertain, but classical writers later propagated the belief that she used an asp, a symbol of divine royalty, to end her life. At the age of 39, she had reigned as queen for 22 years and had been Antony's partner for 11. Following their shared wish, they were laid to rest together, marking the symbolic burial of not only their personal history but also the demise of the Roman Republic.